Good morning. Today is the 24th day of May, the in this 2022nd year of our Lord. The sun has made a complete uh, revolution, or the earth around the sun, another year for me, 74 in fact, and uh, I give thanks to God this day for the blessings of my life, the gift that my parents gave to me, the gift of life that is sustained by those who have loved me through the years and continue to do so, and for each of you and your attentiveness to the, the small things I try to do to help this day and each day become a little better day. So uh, today we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a nice day today. The temperatures are not real severe. We probably in the 80s, a uh, little overcast sky, but sun is peeking through and uh, life is good. As you can tell, my voice is a lot better today. I think I've turned the corner and our medication is working great. I'm in our fifth day, uh, so my contagion should be uh, pretty much over. And uh, we're hopeful for uh, even more improved days as time goes by. Uh, being attentive to this variant of COVID is important uh, that you uh, protect yourself and you protect others and uh, you do the things that are suggested by physicians. I was thankful that uh, uh, Paxlovid was available and uh, that's taken the edge off. Uh, today for devotions I'd like to uh, start focusing I guess on uh, some of the lesser epistles of Paul and uh, do select readings from that, as well as continuation of the little piece that I'm doing in The Road Less Traveled and Beyond. From Paul's epistle to the Colossians, in the first chapter, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers you for you in our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel which has come to you, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world. So it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. That you learned from Ephrathus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. Today's reading is entitled Spirituality and Religion. When I was still lecturing, I commonly found my audience confused by these terms. For that reason, I have gradually come to restrict my definition of religion to that which involves an organized body of beliefs with a specific creed and membership boundaries. Spirituality is much broader, and for my definition of spirituality, I refer to the work, words from William James used to define religion. In his classic work, The Varieties of Religious Experience, James described it as the attempt 
to be in harmony with an unseen order of things. For me, that covers everyone's spirituality or lack thereof. As a self-designated Christian, however, I personally not only believe that there is a higher power behind the visible order of things, but also that it is not neutral, that it actually wants us to be in harmony with it. Obviously, many people are religious, but not spiritual, and vice versa. One of the more secular persons I've ever met was a Catholic nun with whom I worked for a year. She had been in a convent for 25 years and had no desire to be anything but a nun, despite the fact that she did everything nuns do, making confession and service to the community, for example. She gave virtually no thought to God in her daily life. There are also many who are spiritual, but not religious. And there are those who are a combination of both, as am I. I am specifically Christian, yet quite ecumenical. I grew up in a primarily secular environment. My spiritual development was enabled by all the world's great religions, and it wasn't until I was 43 that I was baptized, non-denominationally, as a Christian. With minor exceptions, I believe wholeheartedly in Christian doctrine. On the other hand, I also make use of the teachings of other great religions. What return can I make? Dimensions of the Christian experience, gifts for the journey, is the only spirit, a specifically Christian book I've ever written. All the rest have been more spiritual than religious. I believe that the difference between those who are actively religious or spiritual and those who are not are generally not so much random as developmental. People like myself change in their lives regarding the nature of their spirituality, and I've come to see that there is a profound tendency for these changes to follow a sequence or stages, and those stages we'll look at tomorrow. And let us pray. O Lord of this day, it is obvious of what I should do and what I should be in this day, but thankful for the gift of life, a life that has been cherished by me throughout these many years, never taken for granted, a life that is intended to be lived in its fullness, a life that is meant to bring chances and changes to bear in the things that I encounter, to do so for the good. And I thank you, O Lord, that along that way there have been so many who have influenced what this life of these many years has become for parents and siblings and for friends, for the great impact of my grandparents and their love unconditional of me for those who see my weaknesses and yet still embrace me in kindness and care, for those that tolerate the intolerable that sometimes surfaces in my life, for those that I have been privileged to work with through the many years of life in ministry, and for the opportunities of service within community. I pray, O oh Lord, that your continued guiding presence will abide with me and with each of us this day, that we might become more and more akin to who you would have us to be. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of love, love that sustains the brokenness in life. We thank you for the gift of hope that looks beyond the war-torn lands that are inundated with hatred and despised and greed and that you see and you give voice and opportunity for new life to be birthed at the end of war's life. We pray your guiding help 
with those that make decisions relevant to life and death during these difficult times. And I thank you, O oh Lord. <clears throat> I thank you for the gifts of healing that come for those that place their loving care in the presence of those gifted with healing and in your loving care as well. Pray your continued healing for Frank, our neighbor, for Roger, for Nancy, for Tom, for Nikki and Lisa. We give you thanks and pray <coughs> your healing presence to be with Evelyn Tompkins and her sister, with Sarah and with Becky, with Imez, with Bill, and for all who call upon your name in their times of need, especially those we remember now. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your, <coughs> pardon me, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.